Hello Taurus, welcome back to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, if you're new, welcome. I um, hope you enjoy the reading. <clears throat> this will be a general life reading for yourself. Um, <clears throat> please don't forget to like and share or like and subscribe as that does help to move the videos around YouTube. Fifth house. Twelfth house. Eleventh house. Okay, so um, in regular astrology, normally the um, um, Aquarius rules the 11th house. So I do feel that this um, Saturn-Uranus um, squaring off is going to rebound in some way here for you. It will highlight matters that need to be addressed. Because of the angle of the um, aspect, it's, it, it will highlight uh, things you need to work on or weaknesses, um, whether it's for you or whether it's globally. In some cases it will be both. Because there are a lot of collective elements, and that's collective for everybody, not just for you. South node. These two want to come out. Sagittarius and lunar eclipse. Okay, so we have just been through a lunar eclipse, so possibly aspects that um, have come in to do with that may be um, still working themselves out because the lunar eclipse can unfold over a six week to a six month period so you know we'll see how that comes in for you then we've got moon soul um, as well this is the bottom of the astrology deck we've got a stara Sulis. A lot of watery energy coming in there for you. Bottom of the goddess deck is Aphrodite in a goddess. So this is all about self-care. Let's get um, fairy tarot. King of Spring. So this could represent a person. Um, or a situation, but it's a nice, it's a nice um, energy to have. We've got um, five, uh, five of autumn at the bottom. Let's get a destiny card for you. Okay, so um, let's just start here. We've got, um, <clears throat> this is the bottom of the fairy tarot, so five of autumn, reach out to others for assistance, poor timing for a career change, feeling challenged by money issues. So some of this energy may be just sort of leaving or passing through you at this time, um, or it could be something that you're contemplating, um, uh, you know, right now. But um, this is very much about, um, you know, giving and receiving as well. So, um, it you know, 
reach out to others. So, you know, it may, it may be that you need to just get some guidance or assistance in some way um, and not to block that uh, because it may just be um, going to help you um, through a difficult patch or through a some sort of uh, period which is just uh, requiring some adjustment and assistance at this time. So, and then poor timing for a career change. This could be, just be that you're contemplating that or you've been thinking about it. Um, perhaps you're wanting to earn more money from your uh, from a position and so on. Um, but, um, you know, just feeling just feeling the pinch generally or feeling that you perhaps need, you know, need to improve your situation. But um, I feel that this is going to change because you have got the king of spring here. So I do feel that something is coming in for you, whether it's your part of your reaching out for assistance and somebody comes in to assist you or some something comes in to assist you. Um, but, um, you know, this energy could, as, you, as I say, just be moving off now. And, and this is the start of a new phase coming in. Um, or it could be something that was brought up with the lunar eclipse and now you are are um, you know grappling with that uh, situation currently now we have got here king of spring innovative inspiring wise theatrical so this could be somebody in your in your situation whether it's a partner or a friend or a boss or a manager or somebody else uh, maybe um, um, sort of sort of um, exhibiting these uh, qualities it can be masculine or feminine um, and it says here a financial windfall your leadership skills are needed now an unexpected supporter of your cause so I feel this situation to do with the uh, money is you know a resolution will be found something is coming in for you to assist you so whether it's as a result of you reaching out and somebody comes in to assist you um, or whether it's coming from some other um, situation it could also be that you you know in your current position whatever it is that you're doing um, perhaps you can address a few things with your your manager or the people that you work with or however you do it um, and find another way or find ways to improve your situation so that you don't feel compelled to move uh, at this time. Um, as I said, with Mercury retrograde, it's not a good time to be looking for a new job and all that kind of thing because you will, you know, especially if you've got to sign something because likely it won't go well or you'll have to change something or you'll have to go back and do something again or there'll be some kind of um, issue that uh, comes up. Rather wait until the retrograde period has passed and if there's been no improvement to your situation, then you can, um, you know, look to expand. But I do feel that possibly that's back to the drawing board. Go back over your things again or your plan or whatever and look and possibly there's some that you can fix change or create and make it better within your current situation and possibly somebody can come in and, and assist you with that so that may not be necessary for you to be um, moving um, and, and changing jobs and going through all of that stress um, so see if you can improve your current situation uh, but in the meantime it looks like you're getting some help uh, at this time Um, as I said, with the prudence, this is about being prudent with your actions, okay? So just bear in mind with the Mercury retrograde, as I said, um, be careful where you put your energy. This is really more of an introspective period. It's a time to make something better than what you have currently, okay? So this is about be careful where you put your energy, um, you know, treat your energy like gold. So, you know... It, where you where are you going to put it and this can relate to a lot of things um you know you don't want to be putting it into something that's not going to bear fruit or it's not going to help you in any way you need to be just um alert and careful about where you're putting your energy at this time so that um, even if it's a long-term thing or a short-term thing whatever it may be so that it's going to be beneficial it may not be showing immediately but something that will come you know bear fruit at some point um, but just uh, just be careful that you don't um, spread too much around and then uh, deplete yourself in some way whether this is from an energy or a monetary point of view now we have got here um Fifth house creativity. Fifth house is your house of uh, creativity, obviously. Um, we are all born creative. Not all of us are born artistic. So, uh, you know, just take it as it resonates. But the, the creativity is we use it every day, all the time in everything that we do. So it's your stamp, your individuality, your originality, or just your flair or your way of doing things. Um, and it could be a project related. Perhaps you're involved in that at the moment um, or you are in the creative field. In some cases, this can be like... Um, 
uh, to do with the arts as well. You have got a, the Taurus card here, and that can very much be to do with the arts, or whatever it may be. So this can be stage work, it can be um, on uh, media, it can be, um, you know, an art artistic work, sculpture, or dance, or stage work, whatever the, whatever the, whatever is right for you. Um, it, it could be that something is coming in for you, something new to work on, um, and possibly this will then, um, somebody will step up to assist you, perhaps to offer you backing for that or to um, to commission you for something. You know, these things can come in in a, in a multiple of ways. So all of that comes in. It's also the house of children. So this could also be to do with, um, you know, your children or other children around you at this time. Uh, but it is also very much about recreational activities. So there's anything fun, anything pleasurable, anything that really you enjoy. It can be a sport um, or it could be a handcraft or an artistic activity or just a, uh, some sort of physical activity. It could be anything that is enjoyable and pleasurable and fun for you. All of that comes in with this house. Um, it is also um, about, it could be to do with a love affair as well. Um, so this is somebody coming in, either a new person or somebody that's around at this moment. Um, this hasn't gone to fully to commitment. It's more like the beginning stages. Um, seventh house is is more the commitment. Um, and so this is something that uh, it could be relevant for you at this time. Um, and it's all the all the activities around that, um, you know, the romantic and the um, the pleasurable activities. Then um, it can also be about a risk of some sort that may be coming in with this. This may be tied up to a creative project or to this love affair or something else, maybe even to do with your children. You could be involved in something that your children are going through and you're seeing it through their eyes or you are working through it with them. So take it as it applies to your situation. Um, the risk situation can also be related to a profession and this is to do with uh, like stock market, um, in some cases gambling as well. It's about the accumulation of funds. It's about the accumulation of anything, really, but mostly material things, um, ownership of things, um, income, and, the, and you know, the accumulation of money. And money matters come in with this. Uh, so all of those issues are highlighted, uh, but it is also um, about... Um, you're growing your garden of possibilities. So what is your garden? What are you trying to grow here? Is it a creative project? Is it something to do with your children? Is it uh, to do with, um, you know, a, a, a romance? Um, but it is also a love of luxury. It's a love of home comforts, um, a nice place to be security and uh, money you know squirreled away in the bank things like that just security stability all of these things come in with this but it really is about your garden of possibilities what are you growing how are you nurturing it uh, is it short term long term what is your plan um, all of these things um, on the mundane level it can be literally something to do with gardening as well or getting your hands on the soil or things to do with land and real estate and ownership uh, of that uh, or, or connection to that in some way Income is, uh, comes in with this and also your self-worth, you know, which may come up in relationships um, as well or your children um, and with any creative project that you may be involved in. So all of these things come in and your talents and abilities, obviously, and your skills to do with the arts or artistic activities, uh, whatever that may be, however it applies to you um, and, um, you know, the nurturing of that, as it were. Now, you've got a very positive card here. You've got Astara uh, Fertility. It is the perfect time for you to start new projects, access new ideas, and give birth to new conditions. So for some people, this may be to do with children. So the, the sensuality and the tactile um, activities and also creating a home, making it a beautiful home, or creating an environment which is welcoming either for a love affair or for children or whatever the situation may be. Okay, um, It's all of the, the nurturing activities that go in with this and the providing stability and security and creating something, uh, material things, gathering material things. So it could be to do with birth or conception or children. Uh, in this case, you may be um, in that uh, in that way in your life. Um, for others, it may be um, even grandchildren. It depends on where you are in, in your life. So, but it could also be a creative project that you're involved in, or something that you want to start or do, or an activity or an artistic activity, or it could be something to do with the arts, whether it's ballet or dancing. Perhaps it's related to your children, a handcraft, whatever it may be. But very, very fertile time. Very 
abundant time. Um, flowers are blooming and there's some lovely, um, you know, abundant energy. She's got a basket full of eggs. This is um, this card is um, often associated with when the um, uh, uh, with the uh, Easter period or April um, or any time really that is, is seen as more abundant for you. And so for some case, people that can be like more summery energy um, or spring for some people. So it really depends on what you relate to in this energy. S something that you may be working on may only um, what you plant now may only bear fruit um, in the Easter period. So certainly if you are um, into the, you know, uh, making yourself available to uh, produce children or something to do with your children or conceiving or conception or whatever it may be, or even birthing, it could very well be related to that. Take it as it resonates, but it's a very, very fertile energy. This is even fertility from a, an artistic and a creative point of view or a relationship, whatever the situation, but very, very positive, very abundant energy coming in here. So I do feel that your home and related matters may also be coming in. So we've got here the 12th house. So the 12th house is everything to do with the unconscious. This uh, this house rules your unconscious. Um, and that rules about 90% of your life. So this is everything that's going on behind the scenes. Um, uh, this is, you know, um, what is what is underneath the surface. So this will be your um, your drives, your ambitions, your your um um, the parts that that are hidden, uh, it can be um, behavioral complexities, it could be programming, it could be aspects of yourself that you don't reveal very often, all of this, um, all of those aspects come in. It's also about your dreams, you know, your what you are uh, connecting to in your life. Um, and, um, you know, th this can have a, um, a spiritual aspect as well. It can be connection to the divine. However you do that, it could be through your art or through your profession or through your children. Connecting to the divine and bringing that energy down, that imagination and inspiration. Beautiful source energy coming in is all connected to this. Um, it's also the, um, you know, at times for retreat or reflection or um, solitude in some cases. Now, um, with, as I said, with the Mercury retrograde, that could have been activated already, and certainly even with the lunar eclipse, that could have been activated. So this is about cleaning house as well. This is about going within to look at things um, and to release what is not serving you anymore or to bring up to the surface things that need to be looked at and faced. Okay, So this is why it's got escape there. This can literally be a physical escape as in a break or a retreat or a holiday or a weekend away or whatever it is just to, to relax and get in touch with yourself spirituality it could even be a yoga retreat or a, some kind of other uh, escape so it can be that but it can also be escaping from things that you just sim simply are unable to face or haven't um, just felt that you can't uh, face right now and sometimes things come in to push that into your present moment to be dealt with it can be all of that um, in some cases, it can be um, sort of codependency issues or addictions can come up with this. Um, allergies sometimes can rise up as well. Uh, and um, it is also about um, meeting um, soulmates, even twin flames come in with this, uh, with this house. Um, it's soul bonds, you know, karma comes in with this uh, energy. So it's your karma, your karma coming into this life. What is it that you're working on in this lifetime? Who is coming in for you and so on? Uh, all of those things do come up. And um, it can also be um, the resolution of karma or the karma inheritance that you have. And this can come, as I said, down down the line, ancestral uh, situations, um, you know, whatever you've brought into this lifetime to work on. It is also very much the house of healing. Um, and this can come in with... Um, um, you know, with the, with the spirituality and the mysticism and so on, but it can also be part of uh, a profession. So this is a healing profession maybe that you're involved in, um, or you may be wanting to get healing, or you may be receiving healing in some way. All of that can be highlighted. Um, and service to others comes in with this. So this can be in one of those professions, um, or you are just very much that way inclined. You may be just in volunteering for things or working with others uh, to assist them in some way. You know, all of these aspects come in. It can also be uh, that, uh, you know, um, you may be visiting an institution of some kind and it's your experiences there. So this can be um, a learning institution or government or hospital, um, you know, a library, you know, you, what you learn and what you pick up there. It's kind of got this very reflective spiritual healing energy, but also, you know, service to others and also dealing with your own things which are in your unconscious. 
Now, um, it looks like the emotions are high at the moment. You've got sewless bodies of water. Spend time near water, such as a lake, river, or the ocean, to recharge your battery. So it's indicating that you're um, possibly a little bit tired, a bit run down, um, and you do need to possibly take an escape and go somewhere, um, either for some sort of healing retreat or just a weekend away or just time on your own or just time to, um, you know, to connect with a water body of some sort because it's a, water is very um, spiritual and elemental in nature. Nature, It's um, emotional and it could just be that, that this is the body that you need to be in, whether it's the ocean or a lake or a, um, some other like a river, whatever. Just spend time near there and that will help to recharge your batteries. Obviously, if it's the sea, then get in the sea if you can do so. Um, otherwise, uh, do a water ritual yourself at home. If you have a bath, then get um, you know coarse sea salt, a big bag and drop it in and then just soak in the water and let that cleanse your aura drink more water um, enjoy when if you have a shower let the water run over you and imagine all your troubles and everything just washing away these are all different types of meditative water rituals which are very much to do with the 12th house but it's saying that you need time to do that whether it's away or in your home or in some in some way or shape or form you need to just recharge your batteries to lift your energy up and um, bring you know and uh, be in an environment which is going to be conducive for that the reason you need to do that is because you have South Node life's debts. So South Node is a very, very powerful card. Okay, this can bring in again an, a, a, like an epiphany or some kind of huge realization, but it could also be a big door that has closed for you. Um, and now you must move forward. You simply must move forward. Um, but it's about letting go of the past, releasing baggage, emotional baggage, um, dramas from the past experiences and so on it can also as i said with the 12th house it can be bringing up things that you simply haven't been able to face you need to resolve things you need to face things you need to resolve things and deal with them and let them go because otherwise they drain your energy they're kind of festering away there in your unconscious um, and they tend to repeat they tend to pop up um, over and over again until you deal with them so you know do everything you can to support your body through this and if you need to go away um, just to get yourself together then do that um, but it's about releasing, releasing things from the past, things that have been holding you back. This could even be habits that you have or attitudes uh, or beliefs that you have that are just not serving you anymore. It could be experiences that you've had in the past that have shaped your your attitude now and um, it's kind of inhibited your behavior. Um, and um, this is like self-defeating behavior that can come in with the 12th house, like self-sabotage. So, you know, you need to face these things, bring them into the light because that is, they lose their, their uh, boogeyman factor then when you do that bring them into the light see them for what they are see that they've had a purpose uh, acknowledge that purpose and then just let it go you know and if there's a practical situations you can do to deal with these things and that needs to be done as well but it's releasing baggage because um you know some big door will have closed or some aspect of your life is now essentially over um, and it's the moving away from the past into the future and that's what you want that's what you've come here for you know but if you get stuck in the past and dealing with it could even be past life things that does come come up with the 12th house as well um, if you allow these things to rule your life then they um, inhibit your behavior and that's what this is about. This is about releasing all that um, so that you can move forward. Um, we have, um, so we also have got here the uh, moon energy. So this um, can also be about dwelling on the past, the moon energy coming in, dwelling on the past, nostalgia, sentimentality, and all of that. Just remember your rear view mirror is small for a reason, okay? You need to be moving forward. You can't make decisions um, from the past. You can only make them in the present moment. That is where you are at your most powerful. So stay present. Bring hindsight and wisdom from the past, but stay present. Um, watch your moods, watch your emotions, um, you know, and, you, and ob observe your habits. All of these things come up with the 12th house. This is about doing everything you can to make yourself um, as secure, uh, emotionally secure as you can. And sometimes that can just be a retreat, uh, which is why the 12th house came up. So this is just spending time on your own, doing your own thing. But it can also be to do with um, emotional comfort, you know. And this can be, uh, obviously, you know, don't become dependent on things like food or or other types of, um, you know, create creature comforts, comforts would come in with the uh, Taurus card. This is about 
um, you know, developing your own inner strength, uh, listening to your emotions, listening to your instincts and your intuitions to guide you through no matter what happens. Take a break if you need to go somewhere, spend time in the water, do a yoga retreat or whatever it is that you need to do to boost yourself up, raise your energy, do creative activities, fun, um, pleasurable, happy activities that raise your energy. Um, in some cases, this can also be about birthing. So again, birthing is coming in to do with children and so on. Um, female issues can also come up with this. Uh, feminine issues or feminine wisdom may be coming in or a female figure. Um, it is also that um, possibly um, fame or some kind of notoriety may be coming to you. Um, it can also be that something is revealed under the light of the moon. So this can bring something to your attention, you know, either a truth or something gets revealed uh, and now you've got to look at it. In other ways, something could be a little bit veiled uh, at this time. Um, but uh, in all cases, follow your intu intuition and your instincts uh, with this card. You have got quite a bit of moon energy. You have got the um, lunar eclipse. So as I, I said, this I feel has either come to you already and you're now dealing with it um, or it may it may still come in. But this is to do with a change of some sort. Now, this again could be to do with birthing or to do with the changes in your body or something to do with children. Um, it may come in like that or it could be to do with your profession or just whatever whatever is going on. But it, it forces you again into the present moment. It can be quite an abrupt change with this card. It could be something that bubbles up over um, something that was already in the background but just hadn't taken shape yet. And now here it is, very sudden, very unexpectedly, here it is to be dealt with. But it will um, give you the opportunity to move into a better place. Um, that's the, the, the purpose of this. It's going to push you out of wherever you are. If you've been in a comfort zone or in a, a rut, um, this will move you out of that. Um, and you may be, feel a bit uncomfortable initially until you get your find your feet and then you're okay. So you could be, already be in this phase. We've already had a lunar eclipse and that was uh, on the 26th of May. So you could be dealing with this now. All this energy could still be coming in for you like echoes, you know. Um, but um, within six weeks or within six months, things will sort themselves out. It's just a process that you go through. But normally when, when, the, when the upheaval comes, it's quite quick and abrupt. And um, it can also be a real, it may not be a physical thing. It could be a sudden realization or a, a perception shift that um, comes in for you. And now you are seeing things that you didn't see before. So all of that comes in. And um, we have got the um, Aphrodite inner goddess. So with the Sulis um, bodies of water, 12th house and so on, um, and um, with the moon energy coming in, all of these things are indicating a lot of feminine energy. Uh, whether you're a masculine or a feminine is immaterial, we have both in us. We need to balance both. We need to look after both. So this may be just looking after your feminine side at this time. And this is a very receptive quality. Um, it's also about self-care. This is looking after your body, you know, really doing everything you can through nurturing, whether it's supplements or going to a spa or taking a break away or swimming in, um, you know, like um, sp natural springs, hot springs, something, something like that is coming in for you where you go, you actually um, take your self-care seriously um, and you allocate time for yourself or a daily ritual or just small things that you do for yourself to look after your energy, to raise your vibration and also to just assist you through emotional upheavals or, or changes and things. Do everything you can, but make it wholesome and happy and healthy um, to, to help you. And she's saying here, awaken the goddess within you through dance, self-care and appreciating your divinity. Um, it could even just be you, um, you know, going to a dance class or enjoying that in your home. You know, when you're quietly on your own privately, enjoy that while you're cooking, whatever. Just do everything you can, whatever is self-care related, looking after yourself, appreciating your body, appreciating this vehicle which is helping you through the, your life. Look after your body, look after your temple um, and do everything you can. Um, and and when, once you appreciate who you are and what you are and all your skills and all your um, wisdom and everything about about you, um, your inherent, um, you know, self-worth, basically, that's what it is. It's, it's loving all of that, love yourself, um, love your energy, and just take care of yourself, and do whatever you can um, in that in that regard, and uh, as I said, it could be a retreat, it could be just uh, spending time in meditation, whatever is right for you, do that, and um, that, you, that will go a long way to assist you, you know, to stabilize your energy, and also just to feel better. 
you know. Um, and um, it's quite a flirtatious energy as well that may be coming in to do with the sensuality of the Taurus card. But it is loving yourself and, you know, really um, being at home in your body. Now we have got here um, 11th house. Now this is the house of... Uh, friendships so this may be relevant for you um, it's also the house of um, contacts and networks that you have um, group uh, activities now this could be something that you're involved in like a book club or a, an association or a society or an online group it's group consciousness okay so it's you doing your thing within a group setting um, <clears throat> It can also be to do with global consciousness and global group activities. So you may be seeing things to do with global consciousness. It could also be to do with social reform um, and aspects of that, trends and uh, movement in society, you know, monitoring all of that. Um, but on a personal level, it's really about your personal hopes and dreams and your visions for the future. You can get glimpses of the future when the 11th house is activated. So it's your visions for the future, what you are kind of, you know, have in mind, um, and it can be connected to your hobbies and your interests. Um, all of those aspects do come in. And um, that may be connected to a larger organization or a group or a group consciousness or something like that. Um, and perhaps you're trying to grow that or it's it's, some, it's coming in in some way, shape or form. Um, but it, it could also just be purely friendship uh, based for you as well. So let's have a look. So it's saying here that the Sagittarius I see is a very expansive energy. Now, the um, uh, lunar eclipse that we just had was in Sagittarius. So possibly something has been activated and you're seeing something now. You may be seeing something that you did not see before to do with any of those aspects I mentioned in the 11th house. You're seeing something. You're seeing the big picture here. And um, with the Sagittarius, this is a very broad energy. It's a very um, expansive energy. It's about expansion in some way. Now, this can be um, in friendships um, or it could be in an adventure of some sort or just an adventurous mindset. Um, so it can be physical adventure or exploration or that can be in the mind. Um, it can be through learning. Um, higher education or adult education. It can also be in the form of um, publishing, uh, you know, actually spreading or uh, dissemination of information, your information through publishing or teaching uh, or public relations and promotional work. And, uh, but it's expansion, you know. It can also be to do with the law and legal matters. The higher courts may come in. Um, you could be studying the law even. But it's got this very expansive um, um, quality it's also about luck or a breakthrough of some sort any of that may be coming may be coming in very social um outgoing energy as well and um you know like philosophy religion and belief systems may also be appearing in this and they may may all be rolled up together now we have got here um bust independent your independence is a foundation for your strength and success. So however it's coming into this 11th house, whether it's to do with your friendships or to do with something that you're trying to expand, expand in, could be a, something you're learning or something to do with um, belief systems or something to do with um, an opportunity that is coming in for you. Uh, it could be travel even. Whatever it is, it could even be publishing and, and uh, teaching related. As I said, just take it as it resonates. So she's saying that in some way, shape or form, you need to maintain this independence okay now this can literally be just an independence of thought or independence of mindset or your opinions or your ideas it can be that but it can also be a physical independence where you do your own thing if you're going on a trip or a holiday with somebody um, a friend you know do have aspects which you are doing for yourself or things that you are interested in um, maintain that in some way but it may be also that you are a, a writer um, and you've been offered something but you need to maintain your independence in some way or you maybe need to self-publish you know this can come in a lot of ways but she's saying that it's going to be your foundation for strength and success so you must keep this in mind however it applies to you it's important okay um if you enjoy the enjoy the reading um please take care have a wonderful month and uh, please don't forget to like and share or like and subscribe and i will see you next time